Today I'm going to be going through some of this book, Victorian Parlor Games. Start out with the introduction, a satirical drawing of animals playing a board game, Egyptian New Kingdom, circa 3000 BC, British Museum. This defines a game. says how the Victorian age was the golden age of the parlor game. General party games. Blind man's bluff. Blind postman. Cat and mouse. Alice, where art thou? They mention musical chairs. Musical potatoes. This is musical chairs played without chairs. The players sit in a circle on the floor, all but one holding a potato in his right hand and behind his back. Music is started and each player passes his potato to the player on his left. When the music stops, the player without a potato in his hand is eliminated. One potato is also withdrawn from the game, which then continues on the same principles as musical chairs. This one's called Change Seats, The Kings Come. Hunting Games, Hunt the Slipper. Guessing Games. This one's similar to 20 Questions. Smells. Chasing and Catching Games. Be Serious Games. Throwing the smile. You basically pretend to throw a smile to each other, and if you smile at the wrong time, you're out. Talking games. Action and movement games. Blowing out the candle. Similar to pin the tail on the donkey. Wow, trying to blow out a candle while blindfolded. Acting games. Kissing games. The Victorians were actually not the way they're stereotyped sometimes. Romp games, people literally running around. Rejected addresses. The night of the whistle. Mirror drawing, where you try to draw something while looking at it in the mirror. Then chapter two is word games. I love my love. Proper names. And then chapter three is table games. Board games have been played for thousands of years. Games of the Checkers family have been played since prehistoric times and have even found their way into legend. For Athena found the suitors of Penelope seated on cowhides playing a form of checkers. The earliest form of the game was played by two players with five pieces each on a board marked with five lines. The lines were added to over the years until they numbered 11, and later still those lines developed into the bo board of squares we use today. A game similar to checkers, which developed independently from the European game, is the African Mancala, a game that is played under different names and with slightly differing rules by Bantu, Nilotes, Hamites, and Semites all over the African continent. 
So involved is the play, and so complicated are the rules of Mancala that it is rare for a European to master the game. Mancala is one of those heritage board games like chess or go that is deeply strategic. A very interesting game. If you've never played it, you should try if you're into board games. Pencil and paper games. Doublets is interesting. This puzzle game was invented by Lewis Carroll in 1879. The rules of the game are simple. The playing of it is not. Two words are taken, each containing the same number of letters, and these words are joined by links, forming them into phrases or sentences. Thus, drive pig into sty. The object of the game is to change the word pig into the word sty by changing one letter at a time, but through a chain of real words. Thus, pig, pit, sit, sat, say, sty. The player who completes the transposition with the smallest number of changes wins that round and is awarded with the same number of points as there are letters in the two key words. In the above example, six points would be given. Other examples are these. Prove a rogue to be a beast. Rogue, vogue, vague, value, valve, have, helve, heave, leave, lease, least, beast. Try some of the following. Raise four to five. Make wheat into bread. Dip pen into ink. Touch chin with nose. Change tears into smile. Pitch tense. Cover eye with lid. Prove pity to be good. Make eel into pie. Evolve man from ape. Make flour into bread. Get coal from mine. Square words. A word is selected, its length being a matter of taste, for the longer the word, the more difficult the game. Let us suppose it to be past time. Each player writes this word on a piece of paper downward on one side, upward on the other. The players then have to supply letters to form words that begin and end with the letters as they stand. A fixed time is allowed for this, say five minutes, and at the end of this time each player calls out his words. The words should be as unusual as possible, since a word formed by more than one player does not score. Words of less than four letters are not allowed. The longer the word chosen, the more difficult becomes the game, for, in a long word, there is more chance of the vowels falling together, and the combinations of such vowels as A and U, or their reverse, are difficult to fit into a word especially if proper nouns are ruled out. A possible solution to the square given above might be this. Paste, alarm, spaghetti, taint, illness, memoranda, and wrap. Next they have hangman, which I think most people know these days. This is dots which I've seen young people play. Original sketches, the maze, up Jenkins. Another very old game. Two sides, each with a captain, seat themselves on either side of a long table. One team possesses a small coin, which they pass from hand to hand under cover of the table. As soon as he thinks that sufficient time has been given to hide the coin, the captain of the other side calls up Jenkins, and all the closed fists of the coin holding side are held above the table. The captain then calls down Jenkins, at which the hands are brought down upon the table, palms downward. 
This movement is made as loudly as possible so as to drown the chink of the coin as it strikes the table. The coinless team members then put their heads together to try to decode whose hand the coin is not under, asking each of the opposing side in turn to show their hands. A clever team will be able to guess with some success by studying the faces and demeanor of the members of the opposing party. Should a mistake be made and a hand called up under which the coin was hidden, the coin remains with the same side for the next round. If the last hand left on the counter covers the coin, it passes to the guessing side. The side that first scores 10 points wins the game. Now board games, checkers, fox and geese, checkers go bang, losing at checkers, where apparently you're trying to force your opponent to take as many pieces as possible in one move. Nine men's Morris. Played on a board that looks like this. Classic board game. Tit tat toe. Not to be confused with tic tac toe. That one is played on this board. Coronet. This game is played by six players on a board which is simple to draw. It should be made large enough for each of the six compartments to contain eight counters which may bear a real or nominal value. The game can, of course, also be played with coins. Each player chooses a compartment of the circle and deposits eight counters therein. The player who has the six compartment throws a die. The others throw in rotation, and whatever number is thrown, the owner of that compartment receives four counters or coins, two from the compartment on his left and two from that on his right. Should one of the players lose all the eight counters staked before the end of the game, he may, if he wishes, stake eight fresh counters and the game proceeds as before. If, on the other hand, he decides not to stake further counters, then any other player may claim that compartment by staking eight counters upon it. Should no one occupy a compartment, it is considered non-existent, and if its number should come up, the die is cast again. In the event of a blank compartment, the players receive winnings from the nearest right or left-hand compartment. The game is won by the player who first increases his eight counters to 18 or more, and as the winner, he receives one counter from each player. Next we have Domino Games. A kind of solitaire where we are jumping marbles over other marbles to remove them. Anyone who's ever been to a Cracker Barrel restaurant may remember the peg game. And the next chapter is card games. Marbles. Forfeits. And the index of games. So hopefully that was interesting. Take care now.